Good morning and welcome to this next lecture on vibrations of platelets and shells. Uh, last time we completed the derivation of the partial di differential equation and we moved on to the boundary conditions. So, we were at this point the boundary conditions look as follows integral over time integral over alpha 1 q to 3 star minus q to 3 delta u 3 this is the externally applied shear force and this is the internal plus m to 2 star minus m to 2 delta beta 2 plus m to 1 star minus m to 1 delta beta 1 d alpha 1 dt and this is at alpha 2 constant edge. Then we have plus integral T1 to T2 integral alpha 2 q13 star minus q13 delta u3 plus m11 star minus m11 delta beta 1 plus m12 star minus m12 delta beta 2 d alpha 2 dt and this is at alpha 1 constant edge. Now, we have three boundary conditions at each edge, okay. three boundary conditions at each edge and we can see from here that the plate equation is fourth order in space, fourth order in uh, x, fourth order in y. Okay. So, therefore, at each constant edge you will expect two conditions two conditions on one edge, two conditions on the other edge. Similarly, two conditions on one edge, two conditions on the other edge. Okay. But here we see that we are getting three conditions instead of two, we have three, three conditions on each edge. Okay. So, there is something to be done over here and this was as I said observed by Kirchhoff and addressed so, what now he did is he looked at this plate this is my x or alpha 1 this is my y or alpha 2 and this is the z or alpha 3 direction. Okay. So, this edge if I show this edge, this edge looks like this. Okay. So, there is a q13 resultant, there is an m11 moment resultant and there is a m 1 2 shear moment resultant. Okay. That is this at an alpha 1 constant edge, alpha 1 is a constant here, alpha 1 star at that edge. Okay. And if we look at it end on 
if we look at it straight, okay, what I have is and if I break this m 1 2 moment resultant, okay, so the m 1 2 moment resultant this is y direction okay this is y direction so m12 becomes a full moment when we multiply by d alpha 2 okay so that is a full moment so if i say that i have this moment or this set of forces m 1 2 over a distance delta alpha 2 okay, or d alpha 2 sorry d alpha 2 d alpha 2 and I have the next set of moments m 1 2 plus del m 1 2 del alpha 2 d alpha 2 and corresponding let me do it on the other page. So, we have we have this direction is the alpha 2 direction and then I have the moment m 1 2 moment per unit length. So, when multiplied by d alpha 2 it becomes a full moment. So, this can be taken as a force in that case. So, what do I have? I have m 1 2 and an m 1, m 1 2 downwards let us say. So, this is d alpha 2. Then the m 1 2 is changing right it is not constant. So, I have m 1 2 this is m 1 2 this is m 1 2. Then I have m 1 2 plus del m 1 2 by del alpha 2 d alpha 2 this is still a resultant into d alpha 2. Okay, that becomes a moment. So, corresponding to this I have the next downward force. So, these two make a couple, these two make a couple ok. This is also d alpha 2. If we continue in this fashion, if we continue in this fashion what happens is at every point I have an m 1 2 downwards and an m 1 2 plus an increment upwards in keeping with the sign convention ok in keeping with the sign convention. So, as a result everywhere I have del m 1 2 by del alpha 2 d alpha 2 ok. This is a moment resultant which is a force ok. Then what do I have? I have q 1 3 into d alpha 2 that is a force. So, this is a force, this is a moment resultant moment per unit length and this is hence that is a force ok. So, I have this everywhere on that face and I have this everywhere on that face both are forces now ok and therefore, this shear moment on this face has been made into an effective shear force which is of the same nature as q 1 3 into d alpha 2. So, that now what I have is if I take d alpha 2 outside 
I get Q13 plus del M12 by del alpha 2. Okay. So, now if we bring in this combination, let us first see how the boundary condition looks like. It looks like T1 to T2. I will put the alpha m11 in the front star m11 okay delta beta 1 delta beta 1 okay plus m12 star minus m 1 2 into delta beta 2 okay? and here, here for delta beta 2 I will use the definition for beta 2. So, I get beta 2 is equal to minus del u 3 by del alpha 2. So, delta beta 2 will become minus del del alpha 2 delta u 3. Okay. Then the final term which is q 1 3 star minus q 1 3 delta u 3 d alpha 2 d t. Now, this is already at the ends of alpha 1 boundary, at the ends of alpha 1 boundary. Okay. So, now what happens? Now, what we have is that we look at this term here, we look at, we look at just this term over here. So, we have an integral over an alpha 2 m 1 2 star minus m 1 2 okay, minus del del alpha 2 delta u 3 d alpha 2. Okay. So, if we continue with this I get a boundary term m 1 2 star minus m 1 2 delta u 3 this is now at the ends of alpha 1 and alpha 2 ends it is a corner term corner term plus integral alpha 2 del del alpha 2 m 1 2 star minus m 1 2 delta u 3 d alpha 2. Okay. So, now if we combine this and this because there is delta u 3 here and delta u 3 here by combining what do we get? We get integral T 1 to T 2 integral alpha 2 and I get Q 1 3 star plus del del alpha 2 M 1 2 star minus Q 1 3 plus del by del alpha 2 m 1 2 delta u 3 d alpha 2 d t. Okay. So, we will call this v 1 3 star, we will call this v 1 3, okay. the Kirchhoff effective shear stress term 
and so if we now put this back into the original full boundary condition I get integral t1 to t2 alpha 2 m11 star minus m11 delta beta 1 at the ends of alpha 1 plus v13 star minus v13 delta u3 at the ends of alpha 1 edge d alpha 2 dt okay and a another boundary or a corner term m12 star minus m12 delta u3 at the end of alpha 1 and alpha 2 is a corner term okay so that also gives a condition <coughs> either u3 has to be specified or m12 is equal to m12 from the interior of the material at the corner okay so we'll be looking at simply supported plates clamped plates okay which are fixed also at the corners and therefore delta u3 will be zero so this boundary term goes to zero okay so similarly for the alpha 2 constant edge we get integral t1 to t2 integral alpha 1 m 2 2 star minus m 2 2 delta beta 2 alpha 2 constant edge plus v 2 3 star minus v 2 3 delta u 3 at the alpha 2 constant edges d alpha 1 dt and a corner term m 2 1 star minus m 2 1 delta u 3 alpha 1 ends and alpha 2 ends corner. So that is the full that is the full story. The reason I am doing this repeatedly is that uh, some of you may be familiar with just plates uh, and some of you not familiar with Hamilton's law some of you have done it using force balance. So just to show you that for a familiar system how the same Hamilton's law works. So we have looked at a subset of the original terms because it is a flat structure okay. Now the last item along these lines before we move to the next topic is I would like to derive the same equation, equation of motion. for a rectangular plate using force balance, force balance not Hamilton's law okay. So I will now use the familiar notation u is the displacement. in the x direction v is the displacement in the y direction and w the displacement in the z direction okay so my plate looks like this
So, this is my middle plane that is x, that is my mid plane that is y and that is z. Okay. So, then epsilon x x. So, I am going to use the Euler Bernoulli or in this case the Kirchhoff set of assumptions. Okay. This is Kirchhoff plate theory. So, epsilon x x is del u by del x. Then epsilon y y is del v by del y epsilon z z as our assumption says is del w by del z which is 0. Okay. Then epsilon x y okay, is del u by del y plus del v by del x. Okay. and de epsilon x z is equal to del w by del x plus del u by del z which is equal to 0 in our theory. Similarly, epsilon y z is equal to del w by del y plus del v by del z is equal to 0 also. The vertical shear strains are 0 for, for us. Okay. And we give take the beta definition right away u is equal to minus z del w by del x which is beta 1 and v is equal to minus z del w by del y which is beta 2. Okay. And along with this we have what sigma z z is also 0. So, epsilon x z is 0, epsilon y z is 0, epsilon z z 0 and sigma z z is 0. Okay. So, what happens to my epsilon x x? it becomes equal to minus z del 2 w by del x square epsilon y y minus z del 2 w by del y square and epsilon x y minus 2 z del 2 w del x del y. Okay. Now, we have to get to the stresses and stress resultants. So, epsilon x x is 1 by E siblon, uh, sigma x x minus mu sigma y y epsilon y y is 1 over E sigma y y minus mu sigma x x and epsilon x y the shear strain is sigma x y by g. Okay. As a result of this we can find sigma x x in terms of epsilon x x and epsilon y y. So, then sigma x x becomes equal to E 1 minus mu square epsilon x x plus mu epsilon y y okay. and that is equal to E by 1 minus mu squared minus z del 2 w del x square minus mu z 
del 2 w by del y square. Sigma y y is equal to e by 1 minus mu squared into epsilon y y plus mu epsilon x x and that is e over 1 minus mu squared minus z del 2 w by del y squared minus mu z del 2 w by del x squared and sigma x y is equal to g epsilon x y which is minus e z by 1 plus mu del 2 w by del x del y. Now, we go for the moment resultants, okay? the moment resultants, moment resultants. One thing I want to mention here is that everything is a function of z, z comes in everywhere here. Okay? So, if I integrate this from minus h by 2 to h by 2, okay, which should give me the actual resultants because it is a z, I will get a z square by 2 which over a minus h by 2 to h by 2 will give me 0. Okay? So, all the other force resultants will be 0 n x x, n y y, n x y will all be 0. So, only moment resultants sur survive that is why I am just straight away going for the moment resultants. So, what are the moment resultants? The m x x is minus h by 2 2 h by 2 sigma x x into z d z d y. Okay? This is a full moment. So, this becomes equal to d y integral minus h by 2 to h by 2 sigma x x into z d z. Now, that is m x x into d y. So, this is a full moment, this is a moment resultant. So, all the moment resultants can be put together this way m x x m y y m x y is equal to integral minus h by 2 to h by 2 sigma x x sigma y y sigma x y z dz. Okay. and m x y is equal to m y x because the radii are infinite in both directions. Okay. And lastly, we will need the shear force resultants which is the inconsistency in the theory. So, we have shear stresses that are non-zero or rather their integrals are non-zero dz. Okay. So, now if we substitute sigma x x in m x x then what do we get? We get m x x is equal to minus a d 
del 2 w del x square plus mu del 2 w del y square m y y is equal to minus a d del 2 w del y square plus mu del 2 w del x square and lastly m x y is equal to m y x is equal to minus d 1 minus mu del 2 w del x del y. Okay. Now, if we here d is the bending stiffness E h cube by 12 1 minus mu square. Okay. If we now look at the um, how the force resultants or moment resultants force and moment resultants appear on the differential element. Okay. So, it looks like time is running out. So, I will stop this lecture here and we will look at that part in the next class and finish up with the derivation of the plate equation. Thank you.